Let's start with the most absurd question, but I've read you write some fascinating stuff about it, so uh, let's go there. Are we living in a simulation? What difference does it make, Lex? <laughs> I mean, I'm serious. What difference? Because if we are living in a simulation, it raises the question, how real does something have to be in simulation for it to be sufficiently immersive for us humans? Mm -hmm. But I mean, even in principle, how could we ever know if we were in one, right? A perfect simulation by definition is something that's indistinguishable from the real thing. But well, we didn't say anything about perfect. It could be imperfect. No, no, that's that's right. Well, if, we, if it was an imperfect simulation, if we could hack it, you know, find a bug in it, then that would be one thing, right? If, if this was like the matrix and there was a way for me to you know, do flying kung fu moves or something by hacking the simulation, well, then, you know, we would have to cross that bridge when we came to it, wouldn't we? Right? <laughs> I mean, at that point, you know, I, it, it's it's uh, hard to see the difference between that and just uh, uh, what people would ordinarily refer to as a world with miracles, you know? Uh, what about from a different perspective, thinking about the universe as a computation? like a yeah. program running on a computer. Uh -huh. is, that's kind of a neighboring concept. Do you, do you... It is. It is an interesting and reasonably well-defined question to ask, is the world computable? Yeah. Meaning, you know, does the world satisfy what we would call in CS the uh, the church touring thesis? Yeah. That is, you know, uh, could we take any physical system and simulate it to, uh, you know, uh, any desired precision by a Turing machine, you know, given the appropriate input data, right? And so far, I think the indications are pretty strong that our world does seem to satisfy the church Turing thesis. Uh, at least if it doesn't, then we haven't yet discovered why not. Uh, but now, does that mean that our universe is a simulation? Well, you know, that word seems to suggest that there is some other larger universe in which it is running, right? right? And the problem there is that if the simulation is perfect, then we're never going to be able to get any direct evidence about that other universe. You know, we will only be able to see uh, the effects of the computation that is running in this universe. Well, let's imagine an analogy. Mm -hmm. Let's imagine a, a PC, a personal computer, a computer. Is it possible with the advent of artificial intelligence for the computer to look outside of itself to see, to understand its creator? Mm -hmm. I mean, that's a simple, is that, is that a ridiculous well, connect, well, analogy? With, well, I mean, with the computers that we actually have, I mean, first of all, uh, we, we, we all know that uh, humans have done an imperfect job of, you know, inf enforcing the abstraction boundaries of computers, right? right? Like you may try to confine some program to a playpen, but, you know, as soon as there's one uh, uh, memory allocation error in, in the C program, then the program has gotten out of that playpen and it can do whatever it wants, right? This is how most hacks work, you know, the right, so uh, viruses and worms and exploits. And, you know, you would have to imagine that uh, an AI would be able to discover something like that. Now, you know, of course, if we could actually discover some exploit of reality itself, yep. then, you know, then this whole... I mean, we, we, uh, we, we uh, then in some sense, we, we, we wouldn't have to philosophize about this, right? This would no longer be a metaphysical conversation. Well, right? but, this would just be a... <laughs> But that's the question right? is, what is what would that hack look like? And, yeah, and... well, I, I have no idea. I mean, uh, uh, Peter Shore, uh, you know, the well, you know, very famous uh, person in quantum computing, of course, has uh, joked that uh, maybe the reason why we haven't yet, you know, integrated general relativity in quantum mechanics is that you know the part of the universe that depends on both of them was that was actually left unspecified and if we ever tried to do an experiment uh involving the singularity of a black hole or something like that then you know the universe would just uh, generate an overflow error yeah, or something a blue, right a blue we screen would, of we, death yeah we, we would just crash the universe now um you know, the, 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 the universe, you know, has seemed to hold up pretty well for, you know, 14 billion years, right? So, you know, my, uh, you know, uh, Occam's razor kind of guess has to be that, you know, it will continue to hold up, you know, that the fact that we don't know the laws of physics governing some phenomenon is not a strong sign that probing that phenomenon is going to crash the universe, right? But, you know, of course I could be wrong.